the internet. I'm just gonna be straight up right now. Um, I am PMSing hardcore. I'm really stressed. I got a lot going on right now and I just don't feel like sparkly, if that makes sense. So uh, we're just gonna really lean into the whole crying thing today because that's what I'm feeling and if I'm feeling it, there's probably a good chance you felt it too. So please join me, put on your comfiest sweater, go ahead and order some soup, maybe go pick up some ice cream because that's definitely what I'm gonna do later. And let's talk about some Broadway songs that ruin my life. Question of the day, what are some Broadway songs that make you weep uncontrollably? Let me know in the comments down below. What is this video gonna be? What you doing, Kat? Why? Why? But honestly, I feel like there is a very specific genre of songs from musicals that you just like don't let yourself listen to because it will destroy you. For instance, I literally don't know what the song is titled because after I saw falsettos, I was like, never gonna even tempt myself to look up some of those songs because I know that the second that I try to listen to really anything from act two of falsettos, like I will just straight up fall apart. I got to see the tour of falsettos at the Amundsen. I think I have a video on my main channel here of me seeing it and I wept so hard. Like I think that's maybe the top couple of times I've ever cried that hard in my entire life, much less in public. I'm doing great, living my best life. Not to mention, I was working with the theater, like they invited me to come see the show, so they gave me really nice seats. So no doubt, the actors could definitely see me from the stage, so I'd just like to imagine the tour cast of Falsettos being like, hey, did you guys see that like really short blonde girl? Yeah, short blonde girl with just like snot everywhere. Yeah, that one! She needs some help. Oh, she needs help. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and list uh, the entirety of act two of Falsettos. If you guys don't know if then I totally get that because it didn't, I don't think it lasted terribly long on Broadway. It's by the same team that did Next to Normal and it starred Idina Menzel. I was about to say James Cameron, that's not correct. James Snyder, Lachans, Jen Colella, Anthony Rapp, like great cast. Ooh, how do I talk about If Then without spoiling anything? Basically the, uh, the linear plot of If Then is split into two different options and it's kind of like a alternate universe or kind of exploring the different choices that we make in life. So there are two concurrent timelines for the same character happening at the same time. That sounds a lot more confusing than it actually is. Again, I don't wanna spoil it because it is that heart-wrenching, but learn to live without is actually the one that destroys me. Always starting over is just like, ha <sighs> And then learn to live without. How do I say in a nice way that it's a little self-pitying? Like it's something that I definitely play when I'm like in a car and it's raining outside and I wanna feel like I'm in a movie and I'm just really sad about it. Like I'll start playing learn to live without. Like I have a very distinct memory of driving up to my cousin's place in Washington. And I remember driving through the forest and it was beautiful and rainy and melancholy. Put in my headphones, Idina Menzel is singing about some whiskey. 19 year old me had never had whiskey and was like, yes, I will learn to drink my whiskey neat. Also oddly, uh, also from If Then, the song is called What the F***. That song is so vulnerable and so honest. Takes me off guard every time because I feel like it's such an intimate moment that we all experience with ourselves. You're in the bathroom and you're staring yourself down and either like you're at a party, like Michael in the bathroom style, or maybe you're on a date, or you're fighting with your friend or your family, whatever it is, that intimate moment that you're alone trying to like get your together, if then captures that in such a unique way. And I think that's probably why everyone loves Michael in the bathroom so much, aside from George Salazar's like A plus performance. That kind of intimacy is so specific and within that specificity, it becomes universal. Good writing, everyone, good writing. I love Next to Normal. It is beautiful, it is brilliant. It is not a show that I can listen to every day. In fact, in general, I try not to listen to it. Is it just me or does music? Music has got to affect you like super deeply, right? Like I feel like that might be in inherent in being a creative person or being a theater kid or being an autiste. But like, I just can't listen to Next to Normal because so much of it, I will just get into a funk. Oh, here's a weird one. 
easy as life from Aida. We need an Aida revival ASAP. I know that there have been rumors going on. I know that there have been some little details announced, but like until we get that opening date, I can't get my hopes up. That being said, easy as life from Aida. I took a fantastic masterclass from Sarah Jean Ford. If you guys know her, she is an incredible Broadway star. She played Christine in Phantom of the Opera. We actually grew up in the same hometown and grew up through the same directors and theater people. Something that she taught me that has always really stuck with me is the concept of trying to hold back tears in a performance is so much more powerful than just like I'm gonna cry and weep but that strength of trying to hold yourself together and just barely that is so human and what a great concept and I feel like easy as life just encapsulates all of that like Aida is trying to be so strong and it is so heart-wrenching oh I gotta say burn from Hamilton first time I heard burn I was like oh that's a beautiful song I love this this is great now that I've lived a little more life since I've heard Hamilton that song hits differently you don't have to be Eliza Schuyler to understand what it feels like to feel betrayed by someone that you cared about and you thought cared about you ouch just ouch. Like I remember a couple months ago, I listened to Burn like no less than seven times in a row and just wept in a bathroom. It was my bathroom. I wish it was like an Olive Garden bathroom because that would make this story so much funnier. I should go weep in an Olive Garden bathroom because then I'll have soup after. So who's the real winner? It's me, cause I have soup. This is what me PMSing is like, y'all. Welcome, there's just usually a little more green tea ice cream from Halo Top. Y'all knew this was coming. I can't even talk about this list without mentioning Bear, a pop opera, a pop -era. If you still haven't checked out Bear, Bear is effectively almost like a teen soap opera. It, it almost has kind of like a Skins-y, kind of Degrassi-esque vibe about it. Does anyone else get that? Because it is like a very heightened, dramatic circumstance involving teenagers and it's just kind of the drama of their lives and what's going on with them. The music is fantastic. I love a good rock opera, pop opera, pop era. Specifically songs that destroyed me from Bear, Ever After, Once Upon a Time, Bear, Roll of a Lifetime, Quiet Night at Home. Yeah, Bear in general just kind of messes you up. We gotta talk ragtime. It's probably in my top 10, if not top five favorite scores. It's by Aronson Flaherty, so for all my Anastasia and Once on the Side Island stands, Ragtime. One of the things that's most upsetting about Ragtime, the issues that characters face and how they deal with them is still so prevalent. And by that, I mean spoilers. The screen will go black and white while I discuss spoilers for Ragtime right now. You know, I'm talking about police brutality toward people of color. I'm talking about people, specifically young white men, turning to violence, like politically motivated violence when they feel alone and disenfranchised. I'm talking about women shutting down who they are for the sake of a partner who doesn't see them as a real person and really just sees them as an accessory. There are so many themes in Ragtime that are so relevant to today's political climate and it's sad that we haven't moved further. There's a lot of really, really good music in Ragtime. If you haven't listened to Ragtime, I would 1000% recommend listening to it. Go try to see a production if you can. It's not produced terribly often. I wish it was. Everything I know from In the Heights, that just is an unexpected gut punch every time I listen to it and I don't know why it's so unexpected. I relate to Nina a lot, so it's, it's painful and just very real and like ow. Movie in my mind and I'd give my life for you from Miss Saigon, double ow. There's a lot more in Miss Saigon that also destroys me, but those were the first two that came to mind. Same idea, there's a lot in West Side Story that is truly just my worst fear. Like I think something that's really big to me is the concept of finding your person, like finding who you're supposed to be with or finding someone that you really love and care about and something happening to one of you and you guys can't be together anymore. And that is just like a nightmare. Like that is the quickest way to dissolve me to a puddle of tears. And it's been that way since I was like little, little. Maybe it's just cause I grew up on like 
Disney fairy tale romances or I, I don't know what, but that just decimates me. I gotta give some honorable mentions, of course, to Rent and Les Mis Rob. I feel like those shows were my go-to cry fests of elementary school and middle school. Not so much anymore, just because I listened to it so, so, so much growing up that I have no more tears left to cry. That's a reference to Broadway's Ariana Grande. <laughs> you know when you start laughing at your own joke? in the middle of telling it, because that's what just happened to me. Well, a Polaroid just fell off the wall, so I guess that is my cue to uh, go make some soup, maybe go pick up some ice cream. Tell me about the Broadway songs that decimate your lives in the comments down below. Also, if you're new here, I am so sorry. Actually, I'm not. Hit subscribe. We're also a cult. I don't know if I said that. I don't think I even did an intro for this video. Hmm. This is today's vibe. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really, really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.